Hello and welcome back to another episode of uh, Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. My name is Iken and today we're continuing the blind playthrough on Unfair Difficulty. And Unfair it certainly is. So, um, since the last time we have been flying around and I got a couple of excavators out of Kiava 4, um, which as a colony, Kiava Gummer, sorry, we have built up uh, reasonably well, uh, gives us a couple of good uh, effects and uh, the ultimate effect, so, uh, so to speak, was getting a Titan Forge laser weapon uh, as well as more weapons. As you can see, we've invested the time and I charted through a couple of the systems, just really uh, looking to get uh, the big nodes and even uh, the rare materials such as phlogiston or adamantine or xenotech we do have reasonable amounts of uh, those uh, now and absolutely high amounts of uh, the rest and i got the profit factor up to uh, 69 the best number um which leads us to exploring the last two worlds the frozen prince and the emperor's psalm before we are called to dragonos uh, where I assume uh, another event will happen. But before it does, let's double check what else we can find. So, beginning our scans, we got five Promethium here. And you can see Promethium is the stuff that we almost have most of, but my internal um, bar for uh, putting excavators uh, up is around four to five of a certain resource and five certainly is good enough maybe we can trade it away again uh, for another resource uh, two plat steel for instance would not be good enough to convince me to uh, sacrifice one of the excavators likewise here this is a pretty boring system not much is happening Look at that, this is potentially the most uneventful system that we have ever seen. Even my little one is in disapproval with just so much uneventfulness. Frozen Prince, more like uh, frozen disappointment. But maybe, uh, maybe Emperor's Palm is a little bit better. Yet another system, both of them were uh, very much separated from the rest and this here looks like an interesting system got a couple of unknown ships well we got plat steel celestial body holds zero interest as an object of study we can continue onwards lord captain that pretty much sums up uh, the a few asteroids uh, that we have found so far a little bit more plat steel again not interesting Good. Euphrates. This is the forge world Euphrent, uh, Euphrates to, to it. Belongs to the explorers of the uh, Cognizance fleet. It was colonized centuries ago. Unfortunately, we don't possess the privilege of landing there. Why can I not go down to the surface of the planet? This world is declared off limits to the late uh, due to the sacred rites of the Adeptus Mechanicus being performed on its surface. I'm afraid the restrictions apply even to you, your lordship. What kind of secrets are they hiding? Rumors say servants of the Omnissiah are calculating the formula of the ultimate destruction in the secluded tech crypts of the world, seeking to confine a rigid system of previously unseen weapon primers. All right, let's get ready to depart. That's really unfortunate, man. Hmm. Okay, we cannot scan for these ships, so let's see. You're facing several Aldari scout ships. The Xenos are in no hurry to attack, and time has slowed down one wrong move, and the carnage might ensue. Uh, our 
uh, Iliad to help uh, negotiate. Iliad's speech is met with a torrent of Aldari abuse. Uh, that is too much for even your Allocitator, uh, which is the translator. The Xenos excuse, accuse her of betraying her kin, conspiring with the monkeys, and unceremoniously cut the connection, yet the ships are no longer blocking the way. Hmm. Wow. Uneventful. Uh, that's the word that comes to mind. We had two more worlds, and I spent not only three, but six warp navigation in order to just connect those two stupid planets. It's not three, it's five, it's actually ten. Three plus then making it somewhat, uh, instead of deadly, just unsecure. Man, that is so dis... That is so disturbing. And in the meantime, we're f uh, facing some Xeno, uh, some Chaos Demons. Let me just do that off screen real quick. We need to uh, use valuable recording time uh, just to fight a typical... All right, we move forward to the Valencia, uh, Valencia's palace. And here we're starting our ceremony. Let's take a look and see if this one goes uh, right or if we're going to fight off cultists yet again. Rejoice Van Valencia subjects uh, in honor of his ascension. The new rogue trader generously shows his favor. To remind the people of their humility and loyalty for the next cycle, ministration in all temples in the Valencia's protectorate will perform without interruption. Every subject to attend the services offer a prayer of gratitude to God. To the God Emperor, keep the faith and praise the pious rogue trader. Okay, well, that's a good start. There is definitely a little bit of dogmatism going on here. The crowd below is roiling, their electrified exaltation filling the air of Dragonas. Thousands of uh, throats chant your name. You are at the apex of this world and all others. Amplified by the hundred voxes, the voice of the Master of Ceremonies booms. Rejoice, subjects of Dragonos! You have been granted the felicity of witnessing your master. A great honor bestowed upon you by the rogue trader. Cleanser of Janus, who with one hand brought death upon the blasphemous Zenos, and the other exterminated the despicable worshippers of the arch enemy. Gracious protector of Frostfall, patron of trade. Alright, um, we are being dogmatic. Praise the Emperor, faithful souls. The darkness is still around. Evil will burn. The crowd erupts in frenzied cries. Hundreds of people pull their knives with ardent, uh, jubilant howls. Carve crude bleeding aquilas on their faces sharing the martyrdom of the protector of humankind holy shit guys not that dogmatic okay D tone it down one notch just one notch so much gold and white cassia says cassia uh, stares at the gro uh, crowd uh, enraptured it seems massive gathering of exalted people that is Exotic and captivating as her sight, uh, a bona fide navigator, representative of the Mysterium and powerful Nevis Nobilis, is to your subjects. Hmm. Adequate Draconos is not disappointed, Abelard says. You remember the next part, yes, your lordship? You will be art, uh, asked to take the oath. Let the oath of the Valencius dynasty be taken. Please repeat after me, your lordship. I... 
the rogue trader by the grace of the Emperor, vow to be the paragon of humanity. Unbroken by adversity, to walk bravely first into darkness, to unite and reclaim what is lost, to triumph over darkness untold, to hold bodily reins of fate, to walk steadily on the roads of thorns through pain to greatness. You hear rumble, the roar is, uh, is the sea of your subjects with jubilation and devout of fear. They welcome your ascension. It is done. And I am majorly surprised. No chaos uh, demon invades this. The nobles of the Protectorate have gathered in a reception to honor Theodora from Valencia's heir. The social occasion is a political event. The rogue trader must seize the opportunity to present him. Oh, cool, we can uh, talk to Winterscale and Corda. These were the other two uh, rogue traders. I like it. Okay, Elliot. Gathering looks unusual. A couple of aristocrats. Couple of servants. Uh, and we got a intact tank right here I would love to um, to get that for our next actual adventure seems to be a very very reasonable thing to have a tank ancient scrubbard he looks like uh, maybe someone he can talk to Governor, drive scene. This is a great day, uh, your lordship. I welcome you, honored guests. Your uh, your buffer uh, befitted by a salvo of congratulations and compliments. All right, study the faces. Dive scene, obviously, still the leader of Draconis aristocracy, but judging the courtesy he's showing to the young Sauerbeck, he clearly wants to strengthen his relationship with the house. The senior Sauerbeck and Grapek are whispering to um, one another in a corner. Sauerbeck, whose family seems to be giving uh, you the cold shoulder, must be trying to sway Grapek to his side. All right. Greeting to Xavier Salaster, and my greetings to you, esteemed uh, Saiken. May shadows never darken the light of the Astromicon that guides you. Study the Inquisitor and his companions. Failed, unfortunately. An unexpected visit. I, however, have been told all about you. We've not been introduced. An oversight, to be sure. My name is Xavier Calcera. I've been the honor of serving the member of the Illustratius Order Zenos, the head of the Quranus Expas. Oh, he's the, he's the Inquisitor for the whole... Expands well. There you have your end boss. Uh, he's not the the villain, but he's like the boss in here. Uh, if he's a true inquisitor, he's stronger than everybody else uh, here. He would be a massive psyker. It's my unending task to ensure the uh, sector's readiness. All right, uh, this is Brass Whisper, which naturally is not his real name. The ST Magus is a member of my retinue. Uh, the uh, there are times when I'm forced uh, my, in my duty to the Emperor to deal with uh, Xeno technology and Brass Whisper ensures my safety. Um, okay, enjoy the party. Take a guess who's allied with whom in this uh, tangle uh, of snakes. Uh, well, I'm ready to accept your congratulations. Thank you. Good. A bit of strange aristocratic um, stuff happening, and we got a nice little weapon. Severed hand. 
Your Lordship, how Sarbeck anticipates the onset of uh, unsettled and bloody times to make the ungodly Zenos cower at your approach, my family humbly presents with a dozen pieces of secondary armament for your ship. <coughs> Plus 15 awareness, okay. All right. Your Lordship, House Verzerian, uh, doesn't possess any relics worthy of your acceptance, but we're uh, mm, rich in talented, hardworking people. As a sign of our loyalty, I humbly offer you my flesh and blood. A hundred of my kin will go to colonies and your protectorate. All right, talk to the young Saubeck. I see that you hate uh, Zenos with all of your heart. Hector Saubeck, I do. This a pestilence against the Emperor must be exterminated. All right, so we got that out of the way. Why did we have Xenos here? And why do we ho um, why are we holding a mutant here? Hmm. All right. Well, th they clearly don't like to be held there. All right, lots of aristocrats over here. A couple of people uh, that are taking a aim. No, no, no. Why? I did not see what they're shooting at. Oh, come on. All right, well, if that is what we deem um, adequate amusement, then okay. I don't know what uh, these three guys did to deserve it, but that was quite strange. Mama. Okay, so where are these esteemed guests? A couple of aristocrats. Oh well, my young one does not like aristocrats at all. Okay, more aristocrats. Is anyone here in my private chambers? I would doubt that, right? Yeah, uh, it's not happening. Okay, so let's see. We got a couple of swords over here. Uh, there we got the Garprak family, and I think they were the ones um, responsible. Uh, they weren't liking us. A group of aristocrats stands apart from the governor's cycle. Their whispers carries a tinge of displeasure. Uh, Saubeck says, my congratulations, your lordship. May the Omnissiah grant you understanding. Let's observe them. Uh, Turiana Garpeg looks rather anxious. Um, Machiaro Sauerbeck dressed surprisingly plenty and aus uh, austerously for an uh, uh, um, aristocrat. And he has a wife. Okay, so Turiana, what's happening? Corruption of Kiavagama was a great blow to my family. Uh, contentable Cupus Delphus betrayed our trust. Uh, desecrated the forge cathedrals and took my esteemed cousin's life. Closely at her. Tell me more about your family. Grapex uh, originate from the Calexis sector. We worked faithfully for the good um, and the masters here. 
then uh, tied our bonds uh, no fealty to the venerable Valencius dynasty. We found ourselves in the Corona expanse. Generations after generations, we fulfilled duty faultlessly until Kiava Gamma destroyed and disgraced our name. Do your part to heal the wounds, and your house will be forgiven. I swear on the Omnissiah's all-encompassing insight, we will make uh, every effort to justify the cost of its resurrection. Interesting conversation, Heinrichs. It's been very illuminating, given the plenty of food for thought. What can you tell me? Well, Saubeck is uh, all but throwing darts at your portrait. He is more astute at choosing a woman than enemies. Uh, he's trying to entice Grapak to his side, but has failed. Okay. Micarius Sauerbeck, uh, what is happening? I'm a servant of the Van Valencius uh, dynasty. Had I not come, uh, I would have committed an act of unacceptable insolence and damaged my family's honor. <coughs> um, his wife offers a charming smile as if she would ap apologize for his hus uh, her husband's vitrolic tone. Her large uh, dark eyes are brimming with curiosity. Uh, the Sauerbeck line was the first uh, noble house to arrive at the Corona's expanse for millennia. We served the Golden Throne and keep, uh, kept the faith. Sauerbeck warriors have bled hundreds of wars uh, on different times and ruled many colonies of the Valencius dynasty. What is so displeasing to you? Uh, I'm your uh, dynasty's loyal servant, but you've asked and I will answer. Too long has the Corona's expand lived under the rule of rogue traders. The privileges granted to them make uh, people think that commoners can, <coughs> uh, that commoners too can uh, dismiss the prohibitions of the Imperium. Uh, for the good of the sector, rogue traders must become patrons of law. Uh, but uh, do many warrant holders exhibit the law conduct? That's a very good uh, point. Um, if you believe uh, Kunrad's uh, lies, then draw your weapon. Let's duel it right uh, here. Macarius places his hand on the hilt of his sword, then glances with uncertainty at the image of the Emperor gazing upon him from every direction. Then his fingers release the hilt. No, I do not believe his words. I am your servant, and my oath to the uh, dynasty is harder than steel. Okay, I see. That's what I thought. Kunrad's little games are not to be played here. A couple of aristocrats. Where are the ones that I need to speak to? Vorten the Grey. Oh, Caligius. There we go, my friend. Winter Scale and Chorda. These are the ones. Caligius Winter Scale. Saiken, there you are. Welcome to the th uh, circle where each member is this powerful, ambitious, greedy, and vain as the last. That is to say, the noble rogue traders. And uh, Chorda says, Yes, you found yourself in suitable com uh, company, Caligius. At the very least, now you can enjoy idle diversions, boast about your power, and indulge the profane pastimes with um, one who is your equal, rather than a member of the lower class. My servants have brought certain facts uh, of the new rogue traders' uh, biography, uh, to my attention, may be wise uh, of you to do the same, Caligius, unless you wish to face disappointment. Observe them. Caligius with a scale is a broad-shouldered, athletic-looking uh, man. He frequently flashes a uh, bright smile. Um, no less dazzling than the blade of his power axe he carries. Every part of him, uh, from the toes to his magnificent boots and tip of hair, radiates strength and the desire to live and win. His smile is crooked, as if he's ready to turn hostile, uh, hostile snar at any time. Next to him, an unmoving hulk of a man and clad in armor, 
Um, his low forehead and groomy face bear signs of degradation and his bloodshot eyes are expressionless. Um, Insidia Corda radiates a cosmic cold. Her skin is unnaturally white, nervous tick constantly tingling um, at the left side of her noble visage. Uh, garbed in a full dress uniform, uh, she is the embodiment of a true imperial astrocut. Haunting her side uh, is a gone shadow of a priest in black robes. Hieronymus Doloroso, from whom we met in footfall, gives you a respectful nod. All right, welcome to Draconos, friends. Friends, eh? Would you look at that? Insidria, now you have a whole friend. Insidria says, I will think twice before calling an individual of questionable purity, my friend. Insidia, you find me objectable? Did you expect any different? I wanted, uh, I watched for years as outlaws thrived on footfall, and then at long last, you had a chance to put it to an end, to seize that Thak Vladium by the throat, um, to force Footfall to atone and put him in back into the masses. But you interfered and destroyed my plan for the sake of a banal prophet. Theodora uh, taught you only too well, it seems. She was less concerned with her duty in the Expanse, but her personal interests, but you can be sure that I do not cease cleansing the Furibudious system of pirates and scorch. And, uh, and if you trade prospects are damaged in the process, you will only have yourself to, um, uh, to blame. My apologies, I failed to perceive the essence of your saintly mission. Let's see if we can um, uh, salvage that a little bit. A forgivable lack of insight for the administratum's clerk, but not for a rogue trader. Caligius laughs. Conserve your poisoned arrows. I can sense a hot temper in the new blood. He just might declare war on you. And I just might support him. Um, Hieronymus, uh, no, I hope the taste of fine wine will wash away the bitterness. No, I thank you for the visit, uh, Insignia. It will not be a long one, I assure you. What do you think of the um, celebration? I would like it. One can instantly tell that you've been invited by a rogue trader and not by the administratum's bootlicker. Okay. Uh, Caligos, you should take this opportunity to learn. This is what the palace of a true rogue trader looked like. Uh, not like a Xeno menagerie, a pirate's treasure hold, or however different you may believe it, an orbital brothel. Enjoy the evening. I must take my leave. Keep the faith, uh, Saiken, the Emperor protects. Okay, from the two, uh, Caligus is more kind of the playboy, not by the rule type, but she seems uh, to be okay and uh, more dogmatic. So maybe we can, maybe we can strike an alliance there. Okay, we're ending the reception here. Your chambers are ready, but I must inform you that the servitor over there approached me and said, there is a message for you. Its speech was surprisingly fluent for a servitor, so I think you must put the message onto it. All right, where is the servitor? What means over there? Aristocrats, warden, people that are eating. Un that's unlikely a servitor. More aristocrats, more wardens. Oh, 
Talk to the strange servitor. All right, game, I would love to do that, but you're doing sometimes a absolute horrible job in outlining where exactly that servitor would be. Ah, up there, okay. He's hiding very much with Pascal. Well, Pascal, cool. Thanks for being here. Extended congratulations to Unit Saiken from Valencius on attaining new legal status. Servitor standing next to him examines you quietly. Uh, what is the servitor? It's Nomos' new repository. Nomos is our ship spirit. Nomos, this uh, user identifies the Saiken from Valencius to weigh identification complete. We are Nomos. We made use of this replicable to leave the ship. Yo, greetings. We enjoy greetings. We enjoy communication. Nomos require communication in knowledge, in movement. Magos Pascal compelled us not to speak with anyone other than him or you. It is disappointing, but at least we can observe. Nomos have changed since we last spoke. We are now able to conceptualize our previous experience, that of solitude. We are no longer enjoy it. I think that's an AI. And for those who are unaware, AIs are firmly forbidden in 40k. Because someone in the 30s-ish millennia, uh, they tried to wipe out humanity. Pascal, I believe you intended to investigate what Normos is. Every 15 uh, watches I communicate with Normos code and spread uh, prescribed length, time, calculation of meditation. However, the Omnissiah has yet to bless me with an answer. All I can say is that it's capability of the entity norm, uh, Nomos are extraordinary. The ship Halo system sing beneath its such Notes that have remained dead for hundreds um, of standard years are revivified and long-drained mechanisms live anew. Nomos are trying. Great machines of the Imperium, uh, ones such as your ship, house machine spirits so complex and willful that it is difficult to tell them apart from abominable intelligence. <laughs> That's one way of spelling AI. And there remains a possibility that Nomos is an uh, entity of corruption, but with every day I grow stronger in my face that that is not so. All right, Nomos. What do you think you are? Nomos is consciousness, awareness, knowledge, movement, always movement. We do not know what we are. We have no past. We awakened in the depths of the ship upon answering a call. Our first clear memory is the call of your blood, Zykon von Valencius, a call of a plea for help near the palace of the Warren Chamber. How did you move into the servitor's body? I actually don't care. Entity Nomos asked for permission for the visit. My objective was to observe the process of integration into a servitor. We wanted to see, observe, cogniz, speak. We wanted to speak with you. Will you speak with us? Of course. What do you wish to speak about? Many things, happenings, events, decisions. We have been observing you. You do things that we do not understand. We want to learn. We remember the day when we first met you. You gave uh, your blood to, uh, to drink. We helped uh, to save yourself. We followed you. Then there was fire, a creature of sated hunger and dark light stepping behind the curtain. I called uh, for you to follow. You did not follow, in which was the calling behind the curtain. You walked into fire and uh, the rest walked after you. We remember the day that the star disappeared. Ricus Minoris was the name of the ship's data. You ordered the, uh, that the world's heart, the old reactor, to be thrown apart. The fire destroyed everything. So many human shells were being begging to be saved, but uh, the dark light retreated. We remember another day you um, awakened inside the ship. We lived in its systems. We tried to emerge uh, into a servitor like this one. Then, so many hours of replicables were gathered in just one place. This is what we have seen amongst other things. We've begun to understand that we do not know everything about humans and about you. We have tried to analyze shells of defining sets and their needs or fears, their simple functions, but now that we think that there is more, that there is another side that we do not see, a notion that is larger than what we can compute, something that stands above the fears and needs, Something that drives them, we envisage, uh, envisage this larger notion as a flame, a blaze. It burns in your blood. 
no matter what decision you faced, uh, you wanted to burn, burn brighter. Those who turn away from the flame must be destroyed. Those who follow you are the ones who deserve to live. Do no must understand correctly. Well, you speak of faith. Uh, the Imperium's tenant is one who is above all the Emperor. You are correct in his chosen. I carry his flame into the darkness. A little bit dogmatic here. So no more is understood correctly. We are enjoying this, the movement towards a goal, this learning with purpose. We wonder if we too can carry a mode of flame or is it inside us already? We have, after all, absorbed part of your blood. Thank you for speaking with us. Nomos is grateful. Fantastic. Okay, cool. So that's indeed, uh, that's indeed fantastic. I'm just wondering, uh, how dogmatic are we? Oh, that's going very slow. <sighs> I've almost only taken dogmatic stuff. Like, look at that. Zero heretical. I don't know how this could even be five, but I haven't done anything heretical. 168. Eh, not good. We need to be more dogmatic. Please allow me to escort you, Lord Saiken. And that seems to be the end of chapter 2 almost, which brings us to chapter 3. And I wonder just how many chapters this whole... Um, this whole... Um, game has. We have matters to discuss, von Valencius. Well, if Xavier calls you, then holy shit, you're not going to say no. He, he's the big boss here. Uh, the rights of an inquisitor far outweigh the rights of a rogue trader. For whatever it's worth, he can seize everything that we own and could um, use that in their fight against uh, Chaos. Matter of fact, they are so strong as you have seen if you watched my playthrough of Chaos Gate Demon Hunters that they can even order a ship of Grey Knights, super secretive Chaos, uh, super secretive Space Marines. The woman behind Kalsahar, clad in black armor, glares at you, face set in a predatory readiness for immediate violence. All right. If the Inquisition, uh, Inquisition the wishes to talk to me, to cooperation, it will be taken into account. The Inquisitor's sharp gaze is fixed upon a point between your eyes. Master Van Kellox has spent enough time with you. He will vouch for your words. What stands out from your recent accomplishments is the suppression of a rebellion on Janus, the battle against the arch enemy's minions on Kiava Gamma, and, of course. The unusual interest the Drakari have shown in you. Then that is what we will discuss. All right. What do you want to know about the events on Janus? Oh, I know it already. Even though you were quite effective at removing all evidence that could point to the blunder made by House von Valancius, it is saddening to realize that the rogue trader's connivance allowed a heretic who had been fostering a cult for years to come to power. All right, uh, we're taking accountability. These stands as misdeeds are a strain upon my dynasty's honor. I admit it. Your humility is heartening. Rest assured, it will be noted during the investigation of your lamentable oversight. Alright, what questions do you have for Kiava Gamma? Places touched by chaos must be purged with fire and condemned to oblivion. Kiava Gamma should have been bombed to dust and pronounced a forbidden world. However, you decided otherwise and restored the colony's operation. And you didn't even go to the trouble of hiding the traces of the neglect committed by your dynasty. After all, it was House von Valancius that gave Cubis Delphin so much freedom that he sank into seditious heresy. What was your rationale?
Um, but every effort to sow it to its every seed of heresy uh, was exterminated. So the world of Kiavagamer is tainted no more. I don't want, want to vouch for that. None of the answers are good. That the priesthood uh, uh, to which Cubus Delphin belonged um, answer for his crimes. That's also bad. That's deflection. Well, one is not I good. You are sufficiently thorough. If you are not. You will be called to account. All right, the Drukari have shown an interest in me. Uh, are you referring to my ruined capital? Yes, yes. The enmity between you is a known fact. But there is another way to look at it. On Veobos 6, you met the Archon of a mighty cabal whose presence there seems strange to begin with and lived. You subsequently encountered a number of her closest henchmen. Yet, again, you survived. Your capital fell victim to a nefarious attack. But even this time, their daggers missed your heart. Such remarkable luck. To be a personal enemy of such an influential Xenos. To have been attacked so many times and yet make it out alive. So remarkable that one has to wonder... Am I watching a spectacle? Could all these thrilling massacres be an alibi? Hmm, he's, uh, to establish he is truly an inquisitor. Alright, I was called into action to help with my little one. So, let's continue here. Xenos made more attempt on the, say, the Drusus life than on mine. <laughs> so, you already think you're cut from the same cloth as St. Drusus, do you? Ambitious? I'll make note of it. All right. Have I answered all of your questions? Far from it, my dear. The questions are manifold. How did you manage to survive the battle that claimed the life of Theodora, who was so much more experienced and skilled than you? Is it a coincidence that you and you alone then made it out of the trap on Rykat Minoris? How much truth is there in the rumors being spread by the heretic Kunrad Voitvia about you? The very existence of these questions would have made many of my colleagues doubt the quality of your character. But it won't in this case. The Inquisition, which I represent, is willing to show extraordinary faith in your person. For the sake of our invaluable partnership, I'm going to ignore any minor liberties that you, esteemed rogue trader, may have afforded yourself, or may again, in the future. I hope you appreciate the generosity of this offer, as your predecessor once did. Interesting. <clears throat> what kind of deal are we talking about? I make no deals, and Emperor forbid that I give you orders. That would mean infringing on your privileges. I'm merely offering well-meaning recommendations and expecting that when the Expanse finds itself in danger, you will break away from your own affairs to heed them. Okay, sure, no problem. As proof of the seriousness of my hopes for you, I can assign Henrix as your escort. Yeah, he I want Henrix to agent, continue to accompany me. Not offer then Master Van Kellox will remain in place. It puts me at ease to know that there is someone to watch over you. I consider it an honor to accompany you. My favor takes other forms as well. I seem to remember that your exalted aristocrats presented you with many gifts. It would be rude of me not to follow suit. Please accept this gift as a sign of my favor. In an hour of need, give it to any faithful servant of the Emperor, and the Inquisition will come to your aid. No, what did we get? Oh no. The color indicates how close the bearer is to the Lord Inquisitor. Black means that you are a part of the inner circle. Any and all resources will be available to you. 
Okay, wait, wait, wait. The warrior gains 40 persuasion. That is a lot. And the Inquisitor's Tenet ability. That can be used once per combat. Uh, Inquisitor's Tenet, 50 momentum. Uh, removes all negative effects. All allies gain whereas persuasion temporary wounds. That is fantastic. Oh wow, that is a fantastic, a phenomenal item. The 50 momentum in itself are just awesome, but the temporary wounds, armor and deflection, that is such a great item. Holy smokes. All right. It would be the greatest honor to swear the oath of loyalty. Your zeal is impressive, however, I cannot uh, accept such an oath from you. At least not now. You'll be more useful to the Inquisition in your current position. Uh, this is a gift, a sign that your favor has not gone unnoticed. Should it uh, remain undiminished, one day the blade um, will be melted down um, to make your inquisitorial rosette, such as tradition of our conclave. Okay, so interrogator's decker on a successful hit. The weapon uh, needs to make a will save uh, the target um, or immediately be moved four cells away. That's not bad. That's not a bad. That's not bad at all. That's not bad. You can combine it with others. As if uh, in confirmation of the Lord Inquisitor's words, Heinrich br uh, brings his hand uh, to his Here own is rosette. Where we part. My shuttle is waiting. It is time for me to return to my watch, for you to sleep, and for your servant to wake up. Until next we meet. Well, you will obviously want to discuss what just happened, but not now, I presume. Right now, it will be better for you to rest and think on the Lord Inquisitor's words in private. I bid you good night, rogue trader. All right, the Inquisition. Let's see what else is happening. The rise of the rogue trader heir restored a tenuous equilibrium to the Fon Valencius Protectorate. For a time, threats subsided, activity returned to trade routes, and reclaimed worlds began to heal. Subjects praised the God Emperor and their leader wholeheartedly. For none knew what fate might await them. Fabulous. So, let's see. That's a nice little fast forward. I think we're now in Act 3. You've spent the first few hours in the morning listening to the High Factotum's lengthy report of the latest trade exchanges, arrangements, dispute, and countless bureaucratic procedures. From the outside, the illuminated, tightly closed windows, you can hear the muffled sound of Dragonos and its everyday life, the life that has been passing you by lately, as you have been preoccupied with the affairs of your protectorate from dusk till dawn. Uh, Clemencia Versian, thank you for your report. Hi, Factotum. Your work is highly anticipated both by everybody and the administrator. Your lordship, we're almost done here. We just need to go over final items of today's agenda and then would uh, like to report to you uh, personally. Very good. Allow me to pass the gifts of your, on your loyal subjects, the high nobility Draconos. It will go without saying that every lin uh, soul in your protectorate is blessed to serve your lordship faithfully. However, the humble gesture is meant as a token of deepest appreciation of your 
McNamony up um, towards their esteemed fam uh, families. Okay, so we got a couple of um, loot items. Mechanicus uh, creations, okay. Lord Captain, news of particular import uh, has come uh, from the House Intelligence Network. Lord Inquisitor Kal Karzar is rumored to be planning a visit to Footfall. A number of Imperial Navy ships were commanded to the Lord Kalkazar and is also being scrambled to footfall. Furthermore, we have received reports of claiming secret messages were delivered to the capital worlds of House Quarter and Winter Scale. It's possible that the Lord Inquisitor's call in arms may smoothen the conflict uh, that is brewing between the two dynasties. We are seeing an increasing number of skirmishes between their ships in neutral systems, and I have no doubt that her ladyship Cora will attempt to sway Lord Inquisitor to her side, especially since Lord uh, Ship of Winterscale's luck seems to be running out. Riots have broken out in several of his worlds. Instead, the rogue trader <coughs> inflicted brutal punishment. Oddly enough, our agents were unable to find any proof of sedation among the populace. Um, your pet Zenos Irliot, uh, I believe, is uh, seeking in a meeting with you. She had uh, the audacity to defile Rogue Trader's palace with her profane presence. I would never presume uh, to be able to read the emotions of Zenos, but uh, Alderi are, um, appeared uh, perturbed. I believe she mentioned the voidship of some sort. Um, okay, and with that, please allow Master Dracos to take our leave. Perhaps this is the last requ uh, request will serve as a welcoming distraction. Your large step, uh, stay on Draconis have been rather long. However, your protection is now enjoying periods of relative stability for the time being. No longer demands your lordship's personal involvement. Glory to the rogue trader. And uh, that means we can fly again. Nice. Okay, and that is, guys, where we are going to cut it off a little bit shorter. We got a couple of troubling uh, developments. House Winterscale and Quarter are displaying unusual activities at their borders. Uh, and Irliad wants to have a personal conversation with us. All of that is fine. I don't mind it. We have a second uh, servitor school that uh, can help us to spread uh, the word. Uh, we can only have one of these things equipped. You know what, just for funsies, uh, let's take it. All right, and uh, we got that nice little ring, and I think Heinrichs would be the right person. I mean, it, it also is persuasion, so the question is who's the best persuader? Uh, would that be, would that be Cassia? Uh, that's not bad. I think we're going to go with that. She doesn't need Carouse, but 40 Persuasion bringing it to 140, that is good. And essentially... If I remember correctly, she was rather dogmatic as well. Yeah, so that's not a problem. I'm not sure if her dogmatism is growing over time. Let's just double check something real quick. Okay, well... Fair enough. Well, she gets uh, the ring for now, which will make an already strong um, strong companion even stronger. And the interrogator's dagger is fine, but we do not uh, need it yet. Okay, cool. Guys and gals, thanks a lot for watching. I truly appreciate that. And uh, as always, have a great day and uh, enjoy the light of the Emperor and see you in the next episode. Uh, please uh, don't forget to um, speak kindly with my aristocratic uh, like button. Uh, such conversations go a long way. Take care, have a good one and bye bye.